YouTube, I am back finally with more rock videos. Um, normally I did discographies, but I exhausted my knowledge of complete discography, so kind of breaking it down to smaller uh, bits, chunks of discographies that like I'm passionate about, so my favorite stuff, something I'm, you know, uh, kind of overlooked by many other people, so I'm going to try and do that for the next couple of rock videos. Maybe, maybe I can... Like Iron Maiden, I got like half their albums, the other half I don't even care to listen to. They got, you know, I'm not like a super fan, so I can't really do those, but you know. We're going to do one, we're going to do one of my favorite albums of all time. We're going to do Dio, Strange Highways. Uh, this one came, I got this one, it originally came out, came out after probably... I think I forgot my, my worst the best Black Sabbath. It was either number three or four. It kind of kind of switches up with Born Again. Uh, Black Sabbath dehumanized. This is the album to me. This is what heavy metal is supposed to sound like. It's heavy. It is evil. It has some fast parts. It got some slow parts. It's dark. It's just it's absolutely powerful, right? Uh, Dio was on tour. And then at the end of the tour, his contract was running out, and then they wanted to open up for Ozzy on Ozzy's first of many, like, farewell shows over the last 25 years. And he was like, no, we're Black Sabbath. We ain't opening for them. He left, and they brought in Rob Halford for a show. So Dio goes out, restarts the Dio band, and this album was on. This is back, like, I had to stumble upon this. At the end of the week on MTV, they had, like, the best of the week or the week in review, whatever it was, and they show, like, new albums that came out for the week. I saw this on, like, you know, the slideshow of, like, new releases. I was like, oh my god, Dio's got an album. I ran out to go get it. Uh, wow. Picks up right where this thing left off. Almost the same sound. Vinnie Peace is with him again from the 80s. He was when, when Black Sabbath, the Heaven and Hell period. Dio band for most of it up to Lock of the Wolves. And then he comes back for Dehumanizer. And then Dio brings him along again for this one. Uh, I like it slightly less than Dehumanizer. Just because that one's got Tony Iommi. But this one's got this guy Tracy G. Which I've never heard from ever again. Never heard from before. That's kind of like Doug's Dio's discography. He didn't really have like that great guitar hero. Vivian Campbell's probably like the closest thing he comes to it, but uh, like it's like Ozzy had uh, um, Zach Wilde, big time guitar hero. He had Jakey e. Lee, big time guitar hero. Of course, Randy Rhodes, but he this guy was sick. This guy's got his own sound. Um, Starting it off, well, first I listened to this, this album at work. It was it was too damn heavy. Got me too riled up. Because uh, I work at a retail store, big time retail establishment, and I spend a lot of time in the back, uh, back stock, which could take like you know sometimes 35, 40 minutes. Perfect time to listen to an album. This one got me too hyped up. I had to calm down a little bit. I had to take it down a notch. I had to put the Scorpions on because first track, Jesus, Mary, and the Holy Ghost. That's pretty damn heavy. It really sets the tone. It's like, all right, this is where we left off on Dehumanizer. It's pretty sick. Uh, second song, Firehead. Another heavy one, slow one, heavy slow. Comes up with like some weird kind of demon character. Uh, there's this middle part, this middle breakdown in that song. That is absolutely... So you wish, like, once it stopped, it's like, oh, and they go back to the regular riffs of the song. You kind of wish they made the whole song that way, too. So it was pretty sick. Hollywood Black is about, uh, you know, like, the dark side of Hollywood. Evolution's got one of my favorite lyrics in it. It's got one line that says, I hate you and you hate me. And everybody smiles. It's got the darkest lyrics. Dio wasn't messing around with Dungeons & Dragons. That's, like, the big difference between this and earlier Dio stuff. He went more for like rage instead of fantasy stuff even though like a lot of his other songs were just about like disappointment and anger and stuff like that but then all the imagery was not. It was uh you know fantasy stuff all the way back from like Rainbow but like half the songs would be fantasy stuff like Stargazer stuff but then you'd have you know, long live rock and roll or something like that, or, you know, heaven and hell could be, like, interpreted as, you know, fantasy, but it's not. It's really about, you know, life. Uh, 
Here's, here's, here's a great song. Pain. Give me the choice between pleasure and pain. I chose pain. That's, whoa. Super heavy, super crazy. Oh, I forgot you know, the one song, like the heaven and hell of this album, basically is uh, Strange Highways. The epic song on there starts slow. It's kind of like plods all the way through, but it is angry and it is heavy. Just disappointed with the world. You don't want to be around. Like this came out when I was like 17. Was this 94 or 93? It's 94. So I was like 17 at the time. Oh yeah, this was this was a little bit before um, new metal and after hair metal and right in like that Pantera kind of time, which I didn't like Pantera because I hated like everybody at school who listened to Pantera because they all had like shaved heads and they were dicks. But I kind of into them now. I can appreciate them now. At the time, oh, I hate that. I hate that kind of metal sound. I like like classic sounding metal. This was kind of like in between that. Dio was showing like the old school metal, how heavy old school metal can get and be freaking wicked. Um, this, like like an old school vocalist, metal vocalist, outdoing just about everybody. All right, any death growls and all that crap. Dio can out sing you. Sorry. He's got a voice like an evil wizard. Evil wizard or like somebody singing like Gollum. I'm taking the wizard every time. One foot in the grave. That's pretty good. Give her the gun. This is one of his albums. This is one of his songs with the sickest lyrics. Uh, every verse is about some, like, I think one, one is about a girl getting molested by her father. So he's like, give her the gun. Before the next one comes along, and it's too, he wants like somebody to shoot somebody in every, in every verse, and it's like another. I forgot what the other one was. Like it's cheating wife or something like that. Shoot her too. Give him the gun. Like whoa, really? That was a lot heavier than anything on Lock of the Wolves, and I thought Lock of the Wolves going back was probably a dud of an album. Because he goes into this and it's like 10 times heavier and same with Dehumanizer. No, actually Lock of the Wolves was really good. Very underrated. Just because it came out like 89, 90, that's like, you know, like a week period for all these good old school metal bands. No, that, that album was raising the bar. Because I didn't like like late 80s. I don't even have the whole album, but I heard a few of the songs. Not that good. Um, not as anything as good as uh, the Rainbow and the... Uh, why, uh, brain Fart. It's... Ah, Holy Diver album, come on. I don't have all of Dio's discography. I got all of his Rainbow stuff. I got all of his Black Sabbath stuff. I don't have all the Dio's. I got like half of them, but. Uh, Can't Get Blood From A Stone. That's good. Here's To You. That's a fast one. And then the end of Bring Down The Rain. Just like, oh, we're done with this anger. Anger dump. We're just dumping it all down. Bring Down The Rain. Very good last song on the album. And, uh, what was that, what was that one song? Ah. Uh, uh, goes bury my bones on the moon. If they ever should find me, it'll be too. So I was like, whoa. That was like where I, my headspace was at. Just like I hate everybody in my high school. Screw them. Bury my bones on the moon. Anybody find me? Yeah. Like, uh, that was in pain. That was in pain. That was like the midsection breakdown. Uh, all the, the rest of the guys in the band were, um, like I said, Vinny Apice. Apice, his brother's Carmine Apice. I don't know why either of them, that's, why? Why do they both pronounce it? I knew a guy, he, he, he messed with his name. I met his sister. I don't want to say his name. But they both pronounced their names differently. Uh, where was I? I'm completely lost. Oh, lineup. Uh, Jeff Pilson from Dokken, he's on this. He plays bass on this. Uh, and the Tracy G guy who's never been heard from again. But then, what is this, two years later, three years later, comes up with a follow-up, Angry Machines. I was excited. I didn't know it was coming out. Just saw it in the store, picked it up, boom, got to buy it. We didn't have the internet. Uh, there was some people had internet, but nobody really had internet till like around 99, 2000. Not everybody had the internet. Uh... The best song on this one was uh, was Double Monday. I love that song. Um, 
The rest of it sounds the same, but just like, you know, weaker tracks. Ends off really good. It's got, this is, this is your life. Like, Dio showing off his great ballad, ballad voice. Like, if you ever heard his stuff from, like, the, the, he put out some 45s in the early 60s, maybe even late 50s. I don't know how old he was. Um, there's an angel is missing. Look for that. The guy has a voice of an angel. Seriously. That was him doing, like, you know, early doo-wop, like, ballads and stuff. Kind of, you, you knew, you knew he, you knew he had it in him. Later on, I didn't hear that until, like, of course, well, I got the internet until, mm, probably heard that 2005-ish or so. But this one comes with, this is the remaster. I got this. I haven't listened to my tape version of it in, like, 20 years. I was, oh, yeah, I used to like that one. Was like, eh, yeah, I guess it wasn't. I, I, then I remembered it's not as good as Strange Highways, but it's got a whole bunch of, uh, it's got a concert extra disc. It's got Jesus, Mary, Holy Ghost on there. Um, yeah, that's the only song on there from Strange Highways. Kind of disappointing, but good album. How do you like this new thing where I break down just a simple one album? Maybe it was one of your favorite albums. Maybe it's underlooked. Uh, after, after Angry Machines, he went on back to like, you know, the dragon stuff, Killing the Dragon, Magicka, all that other stuff. Went back to more of his classic sound. Vinny Apice left. And he brought back some of the other 80s guys, Craig Goldie. I think Simon Wright, was that the guy's the drummer's name? He was also in ACDC. He was in the band, too. I don't have all those albums, either. But uh, this is me breaking down just one album at a time. Some of my favorites, some of my suggestions. Don't listen to this at work. You're going to end up wanting to you know, put people in like uh, headlocks and things. Uh, you just want to start wrestling people. Stone Cold Stunning, like everybody you work with. Don't do that. Don't do that. Switch over to Scorpions. A little lighter. A little lighter. Put on like Crazy World or something. Um, but thank you. We're going to do more of these because this was easier to do than a whole discography. Boom. I forgot to mention, I got Dio's autograph and Tony Iommi and Vinny Apice and Geezer Butler. I stood online for like three hours after uh, the Heaven and Hell concert. Maybe two and a half. I forgot. But it was a very long time, that Mohegan Sun. Boom.